Thanks very much. Today on The Real Story, New York's Timothy Cardinal Dolan takes on Governor Cuomo's anti-conservative comments and tells the gov who the real extremists are. Two military vets on opposite sides of the Pentagon's new rules that say it's okay to have beards and turbans for religious reasons. A former Trader Joe's prez opens a new store selling expired food. So would you actually buy the stuff? And do you have any idea what NFL cheerleaders actually make in salary? Well, wait till you hear why Oakland's Raiderettes are suing the Raider team. Well, a new report says the NSA's collection of your phone records is illegal and doesn't really stop terrorism anyway. So now what? The independent watchdog group urging the spy agency to stop collecting phone data on hundreds of millions of Americans and get rid of the massive inventory of call records. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge is live for us in Washington. So a stinging rebuke, is it not, of what the president just said last week? Well, it is, Gretchen. This report comes from a group called the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board, known here in Washington as the PCLOB, and they conclude that the collection of phone records is illegal and not effective. A short time ago, the White House spokesman saying the administration could not disagree more with the report, but during a series of questions, Jay Carney could not point to a specific plot where the phone records provided the primary lead. This program... Uh, combined with the other programs and efforts that are undertaken as part of our signal intelligence collection, uh, have had uh, the effect of making Americans more safe, of disrupting uh, potential terrorist plots against the United States and the American people, as well as our allies. And this new NSA report concluded that this section of the Patriot Act 215, which was brought in after 9-11, it was never designed to justify this bulk collection of Americans' phone records, which is what we have with the NSA right now, Gretchen. It's amazing how one person can make such a difference, and I'm talking about Edward Snowden. So now what are we to make of Snowden, his upcoming web chat today? Mm -hmm. Well, an hour from now, the NSA leaker is holding a question and answer session on the web. It's not clear at this hour whether it's going to be a Skype situation or just text or whether the site just may crash because of the high interest level. But what we expect is that it will be the first time Snowden weighs in on the president's reforms and he publicly responds to these espionage allegations. In a recent interview with the New Yorker magazine, Snowden stressing he, quote, clearly and unambiguously acted alone with no assistance from anyone, much less a government, and saying that these allegations, it won't stick because it's clearly false and the American people are smarter than politicians may think. Now, a source familiar with the investigation separately told Fox News that Snowden did have suspicious contacts in Hong Kong and he stayed with a non-Chinese national, likely a Russian. He did not stay at that luxury hotel when he traveled from Hawaii to Moscow. And there have been lingering questions over how he was able to identify sort of the perfect shopping list of documents that will reveal sources and methods of the U.S. intelligence community and really so effectively disrupt our alliances overseas, Gretchen. Wow, so many still mm -hmm. unanswered mm -hmm. questions, uh, but you're doing the digging. Thanks so much, Catherine. I'm doing my best. Thank you. Well, we are getting a new snapshot on how you, how Americans feel about the NSA disclosures. According to a new Fox News poll, 68% of registered voters say they're glad the spy agency's program was made public, 25% not happy about the leak. The poll asked voters to set aside how they feel about Snowden and his crime. It has a plus or minus 3% margin of error. For more on all of this, let's bring in Fox News Senior Judicial Analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Great to see you, Judge. Oh, nice to be with you, Welcome Gretchen. Welcome to The Real Reminds Story. Reminds me of the old days at uh, 6.15 in the morning. Yeah, well, this is a little <laughs> bit better time, time slot. Um, let's talk about what you think this says as far as a message, this new report that's come out. What kind of message does it send to the Obama administration? This is the fourth official government examination of the NSA spying program since Edward Snowden's revelation. The first was by a federal judge who found it unconstitutional. The second was by another federal judge who found it constitutional. The third was by the Civil Liberties Board appointed by the president. The fourth was this one, the Privacy Board appointed by the president. They all agreed on one thing. There is no credible evidence 
that this program has kept us safer or has kept the bad people away from us. Yeah, but they even went a step further because they called it illegal. Well, this particular group called it illegal, the, that the president appointed. The Civil Liberties Board called it illegal. One of the two judges called it illegal, and one of the judges found it constitutional. So this tells me this will eventually make its way to the Supreme Court. This also tells me the poll that you just showed, 68% mm. of Americans are glad that uh, Snowden revealed this. Americans are getting a little weary of it. It is really, really massive. How massive? The NSA captures 500,000 buddy lists a day, 600,000 address books a day, 200 million texts a day wow. before we even get to the telephone calls. So you believe that it's an unqualified embarrassment for the administration because now you have the president last week coming out with his so-called reforms, which both sides of the aisle didn't really see as doing that much. And, and what do you make of the politics behind the president coming out with his reforms and now this panel coming out after him, although he did discuss apparently it with this panel? Right before the president came out with his so-called reforms, and you know that I, I wrote in my column that they don't reform anything. Uh, Senator uh, Bernie Sanders, the socialist from Vermont, wrote to the head, head of the NSA saying, are you spying on Congress? Right. The answer was, you ready for this? Yep. Congress gets the same constitutional protections as the rest of the United <laughs> States, which is to say none. In the real world, that would have triggered massive investigations and probably a cutback of the NSA's budget. This gets to your question. The members of Congress are either afraid of what the NSA knows about them, or they want to give the impression to the American public that they're doing something, and the something that they're doing to keep us safe is spying on us. Guess what? All four groups that have looked at this have said the spying doesn't keep us safe, or it gives us a false impression. This is a direct quote from the report that just came out today. We have not identified a single instance involving a threat to the United States in which the telephone records program made a concrete difference in the outcome of a counterterrorism investigation. The same thing was said by two federal judges who gave the NSA ample opportunity to demonstrate how have you protected us by this spying? Is there any good that we can balance against all this invasion of privacy? They couldn't present well, any so, of the so good. So what will the president do? I don't think the president will change anything because the president is intent upon creating this image a false image, an erroneous image, that he is protecting us and keeping us safe by spying on us. Guess what? He is doing to us what other governments did to their people, governments we fought against in World War II and wow. in the Cold War. All right. Judge Andrew Napolitano, always welcome here on The Real Story. Pleasure. Thanks for your analysis. Pleasure, Gretchen. And a Fox News alert for you now because we are awaiting Justin Bieber to leave jail after posting $2,500 bail. Well, he was arrested last night, as you probably know, for drag racing, driving with an expired license, driving under the influence, and resisting arrest. Police say Bieber admitted that he had been drinking, smoking marijuana, and taking prescription medication. Look at that onslaught of media there, Judge. It's crazy. <laughs> I am not surprised. We see this on the streets of New York whenever he's here. Yep. So we will bring that to you when it happens.